Hello crafty friends and welcome to this more bang for your buck video. This one is a little bit different in that it's a one-off. We're not using one tool to create lots of cards. Instead, I want to show you something that I did yesterday. So I was rummaging through my supplies and I came across these zebra mild liners and I thought I just haven't used them enough for them to justify their place in my craft room. I really love the colours, they're kind of pastel colours, not too bright, but I don't use them very often. So I thought, well, how can I incorporate them into my card making? So what I did was I went through my Catherine Poole inks and I married up some of the inks that I have with the colours in the mild liners. And I was really surprised at how close some of the matches were. So some of these are from the Spa Collection. I think all of them except for Cummerbund are from the Spa Collection. So they're more muted colours. So we've got Red Mild Liner and Rose Petals ink. Vermilion Mild Liner and Polished ink. Gold Mild Liner Shea Butter ink. Green Mild Liner, Matcha Ink, Blue Mild Liner, Cummerbund, Dark Blue Mild Liner and, oh, where's it gone? There it is, Tranquil. Violet Mild Liner and Pixie Dust. So actually Pixie Dust and Cummerbund are both from the Party Collection, so they're a bit brighter. The rest are from the Spa Collection. So now I can stamp or blend with these inks and I've now got a brush pen, so it's brush pen at one end and a fine liner because it's a fine liner at the other end or a bullet tip rather. So hopefully I'll be able to incorporate these pens into my card making a bit more because I can pair them with some inks. So that's what we're going to do now. To start, I'm going to choose six of the colours, six of the seven, because I want to have six elements on my card and all I'm going to do is take the brush pen and on this piece of smooth white cardstock I'm just going to draw some lines I'm going to try and keep them parallel but I'm not going to worry if they wander off they don't have to be equal thickness they just have to look like stripes So there we go, I've got all my lines drawn and I'm going to chop that up so that I can run it through my mini Gemini one at a time. So what I want to do with this is cut some hearts out of this stripy paper. So I'm going to end up with a little harvest of stripy hearts and I want the top of my die to touch one of the lines so that I've got colour on the very top of the heart and I want the bottom of the heart also to touch one of the lines so that I've got colour on the tip of the heart as well. That's the idea. I'll just hold that in place with some tape and run each one through my mini Gemini. I've also got some spare in case I want to cut something else or cut some more. So there we have six little hearts in rainbow order with some hand-drawn stripes on them. So I was just looking at this and I realised that I think Clay Mask from the Spa Collection is actually closer to Vermilion than Polished. So I might substitute Clay Mask in there. Let's just pop that in and see what we get. I might do a double stamp because it's a bit of a lighter colour. So either of those colours would work in this rainbow, I think. So the panel for the front of my card is a bit of an unusual size. It is about four by seven inches and I want to add an embossed rectangle onto the front. So I've got this rectangle die. I'm going to use my T-square ruler to make sure it is square and roughly in the middle. 
so it doesn't shift while I am embossing. I'll hold it down with this sticky note. So now we've got an embossed rectangle and I can add my hearts. And I'm going to use glue to stick them straight on the background. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of glue to the back and stick this on my 5x7 card blank, which is obviously too wide for this panel. So I'm going to trim it down once I've got this stuck where I want it. So now I've got my heart stuck on my card. I'm going to use the Catherine Polar inks to stamp a sentiment onto this piece of smooth white cardstock. I've chosen this Alpha stamp set. I believe it is Stampin' Up. I picked it up from a charity shop. I think it's a Stampin' Up one. And I'm going to stamp out the words love and you. The font is a, a quite a fun font. The letters look like they've been cut out of paper almost. They're not the same size as one another. So it really doesn't matter if I don't get my letters in a straight line. I'm working backwards along the rainbow from the pixie dust to the rose petals so that the first letter, love, is going to be about here. So it'll be a purple letter sitting near the pinky ready heart rather than a pinky ready letter sitting near a pinky ready heart just for variation and interest. And there's our sentiment, I love you. And I'm going to use this rectangle die to cut that out. The rectangle die is obviously too big for the sentiment wide lengthways, uh, so I will shorten that. And to bring a bit of bling into the card, I'm going to mount this on gold foiled cardstock and give it a fairly small gold foiled border. And to make it look as if it's been die cut, I'm going to use this embossing tool to bevel the edge like that. I want to add some dimension as well so I'm going to pop the sentiment up on foam tape and to bring even more bling in I'm going to use some of these Circles that I've cut from gold foil cardstock with this die. So I'll just dip those in there and pop a few here and there. So there we go, the card's finished. I really like the way it turned out and I love that I can match my mild liners and my Catherine Pooler inks, which I think will give me more bang for my buck where my brush pens are concerned because now I'll use them more and I think I'll even keep these 
with my Catherine Pula inks, I'll store them in the same box. Right, I think that'll do. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you an idea about maybe trying to match products that uh, aren't meant to match particularly, but combined they could give you more bang for your buck. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.